Lord, just speak a word to us this morning. Help us to see that there's something that you want to not only impart to us, but, Father, that you would impart it so powerfully and deeply in us that we would impart it to everyone else that we meet. We'd impart it to one another, and we would impart it to the lost. We'd impart it to our spouses, our children, grandchildren, strangers, in the name of Yeshua, amen. I have uh, not a long word this morning. We're going to be done. Uh, Mike, thank you for sharing. I'm glad that you felt comfortable enough. That's kind of not something that you, uh, since we've known you, that's the first time, you know, that was a Holy Ghost outburst. I loved it. Amen? Yes. And uh, we need to hear the Lord, and we need to understand do um, you know that God uses emotion, amen? Yes. And our emotions aren't the same thing as his emotions, right? I used to make a mistake in my earlier years thinking every time I had a strong emotion, that was the Holy Ghost. And then, well, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't the Holy Spirit. That's what a lot of times people who are charismatic in nature or you know, maybe they got raised in a Pentecostal background, whatever, maybe they make a mistake and they think that their emotions are the same thing as the Holy Spirit. And God had to break me from that. I mean, he really had to crush me and show me that. that. But nevertheless, God does have emotion. He created emotion. And his emotion is pure. Amen? I mean, his emotion is pure and it's holy. And he will touch us in our emotions, amen? And when he does, it's glorious. I mean, we love the Lord to touch us in our emotions, amen? That deep place in your soul, right? But uh, we just need to learn when the Lord is moving. And sometimes when he moves upon a person, you can feel and sense the emotion of the Lord coming through their own emotion. And it's both the Lord and the person. And we need to realize that God, we are all clay. As I shared, you know, last week, we are all, do you know we're all crackpots, amen? Come on, you can laugh. You know, we are all vessels of clay, and we all have cracks, amen? And we all have places where we've been broken, where there's been cracked. God uses that, and he uses that to bring forth his glory if he lets us. God works with the clay. And just as Yeshua was fully God and fully man, okay, he works with us both in the natural and in the spiritual. Amen? That's why he works through the, listen, God works through the funniest of personalities. Amen? Amen. He works through me. Amen? He works through every different kind of personality. And we need to just receive, receive everyone that the Lord puts in our lives. Amen? Turn with me to Acts chapter 4, and I want to share just briefly about one of my favorite characters in the Bible and in the Brit Hadashah. And that is a guy by the name of Barnabas. And I love Barnabas. Since I've been a believer, I've always been enthralled uh, by Barnabas and struck by him. And I really dig this guy, all right? So I wanted to share that. And uh, Acts chapter 4, all right, and verse 32. And it's talking about the believers, um, and I believe they're in Antioch. Uh, the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. And not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own. All things were common property to them, or some of your versions, they had all things in common, and, and with great power. 
the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Yeshua and abundant grace was upon them all and there was not a needy person amongst them for all who were owners of land and houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and would lay them at the feet of the apostles and they would be distributed to everyone who had need and now Joseph was a Levite of Cyprian birth he was from Cyprus who is also called Barnabas by the apostles why which translated means the son of encouragement. And all some of your versions may say son of exhortation, the son or son of comfort. And, uh, and who owned a tract of land, he sold it and he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. In the book of Acts chapter 4, we read about a powerful move of God. Uh, the Ruach singles out Joseph, who was a Levite from Cyprus, and they called him Barnabas. And today, I want to talk to us just for a few minutes. We're not going to have a long message because we have our annual business meeting this morning. God wants to make each and every one of us a son or a daughter of encouragement. Amen? To be a son and a daughter of encouragement to be a Barnabas. To be a Barnabas. And then turn with me to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. And we're going to look at verse 19. Starting in verse 19. Speaking about the congregation, the ecclesia that is in Antioch. So then those who were scattered because of the persecution that occurred in connection to Stephen, uh, who was the first martyr, uh, they made their way to Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except to the, for the Jews alone. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus, and Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began speaking to the Greeks also, thank you, Lord, preaching the Lord Yeshua. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a large number believed on the Lord. And the news about them reached the ears of the ecclesia at Jerusalem, and they sent, they sent Barnabas. They sent Barnabas, the son of encouragement, uh, off to Antioch. And uh, when he arrived, he witnessed the grace of God. So this is like the first fellowship of not only Jewish believers. They were all Jewish believers. Now it's mixed with Greek and non-Jewish believers here, all right? And it's a, a foretelling of all the things that were about to take place. So... Then he arrived and witnessed the grace of God. He rejoiced and he began to encourage them all with a resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. To remain true to the Lord. He was a good man. He was full of the Ruach HaKadosh and of faith. If you're full of the Ruach HaKadosh, you're going to be full of faith. Amen? Doesn't mean you're going to be full just of emotion. You're going to be full of trust. You're going to be full of faith. Amen? And uh, he, considerable numbers were brought to the Lord. And he left for Tarsus. And he went to look for Saul. Saul of Tarsus. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the ecclesia and taught considerable numbers. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Now at this time, there were some prophets who came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them was name was Agabus. And, uh, and then he stood up and began to indicate by the Spirit that there would be a great famine all over the world. And this did take place in the reign of Claudius. And, uh, and in the proportion that any of the disciples had means, each of them determined to send a contribution 
for the relief of the brethren living in Judea. And this they did, and they sent it in a charge into the hands of Barnabas and Saul to the elders. Now look at this. So here in Acts chapter 11, we read, A large numbers of Greek non-Jews began coming to faith in Yeshua, the apostles. Who do they send? They send a son of encouragement, the son of comfort and exhortation to Antioch, Barnabas. And uh, it was Barnabas who the Lord used to launch the apostolic ministry of Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul, who then wrote 13 of the books of the Brit Hadashah. Before too long, uh, we read here, the Lord raises up prophets and teachers. Now look at Acts chapter 13, the first five verses. Now that we were at Antioch, in the ecclesia that was there, prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Perhaps Barnabas was a prophet, uh, or he was a teacher. Simeon, who is called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene. These are not all Jews. They're, some of them are Gentiles. Simeon, who is from Niger, is probably you know, a, a black brother in the Lord. Lucius of Cyrene. Menaeum, who had been brought up uh, with Herod the Teoch, Tidark. And uh, Saul. And uh, while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Ruach HaKadosh said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I had uh, called them. And then they had fasted and prayed. They laid their hands on them, Barnabas and Saul, sent them away. And so being sent out by the Ruach HaKadosh, they went down to Seleucia and they went from there and sailed to Cyprus. And then they reached Salamis and they began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jewish people. And they also had John, who is also known as Mark, as their helper. We'll stop right there. And, um, and we see that there was a move of the Holy Spirit and Barnabas and Saul, who became Paul, were then anointed apostolically and they became apostles. Now it is my belief, it is my um, really uh, uh, conviction that not only was Paul an apostle, but Barnabas also became an apostle. I believe that there were, I absolutely believe it, maybe we'll teach on it sometime, there were more than just the 12. Not, and there were more than just the 12, and I believe Paul took the place of Judas. Okay, I do. But there were others, and here the Holy Spirit sent and Barnabas and Saul had hands laid on him and they were sent out and an, an apostle is a sent one and they were all that was both Paul who was called Saul at that time and Barnabas were released into apostolic callings. Before long, Paul has such a unique anointing upon him, he becomes more prominent than Barnabas, and you don't hear that much about Barnabas for the rest of the Brit Hadashah or the rest of the uh, Book of Acts, but I'm telling you, God still used him powerfully. Amen? Amen. And if all he ever done was this, that was to change the world, and it changed millions of lives. Amen? And I want to tell you that every one of us, every one of us, every human being needs encouragement. We, we need sons of encouragement and sons of exhortation in our lives. We need Barnabases, amen? Male and female Barnabases. I don't know what the female for Barnabas is, so I'm not even going to try it, okay? You know? Uh, but look at um, verse, uh, Proverbs 25, 25. Wonderful proverb, 25, 25. Wasn't there an old song in the year 25, 25? I don't know, it's just my, my old hippie recollection from the 60s. 
in the year 2525, okay. Like cold water to a weary soul, so is the good news, the gospel from a distant land. Let me tell you, there are a lot of weary souls out in the world, amen? There's a lot of, you can get weary. You can get weary just working in this world, dealing with people in this world, dealing with superiors, you know, dealing with uh, employers, dealing with uh, family members, sometimes siblings, children, come on, you know. Uh, people, we're always going to be running af across once in a while a sister thorn, you know, thorn bush and, a, you, know, uh, you know, brother, rub you the wrong way, all right? You know, we, we, we're always going to have people that, uh, you know, that sometimes they're like a thorn and a thistle, but that doesn't mean that God still hasn't placed them in your life. God hasn't brought them into your life, your congregation, your family. And you have to learn to be a Barnabas, amen? And overcome, don't be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good, you know, the scripture says, amen? And, uh, you know, we are called to be like cold water to a thirsty soul, amen? Like cold, when you are a Barnabas, when you are a son, a daughter of encouragement, you're like cold water to, to a, somebody who's been out there in the desert and they're dying of thirst, all right? You're like cold water to a thirsty soul. Philemon, um, the epistle of Philemon, a very kind of a uh, obscure little epistle written by Paul, Philemon, only one chapter. Let's see if you can find it. Philemon. Okay, look at this. Verse 7. I love this. I lo in fact, I love this verse actually in the King James. <laughs> but I, I usually read the, I'll read it in a numeric standard. So Paul is speaking. He says, I have come. He's speaking to Philemon. And uh, and he says, I've come to have much joy and comfort in your love. Boy, can't you, can't you say amen to that? There are people who, they're just, you know, somehow, maybe unbeknownst even to themselves, there are, they are messengers, they are vessels of the Lord's joy, the Lord's love to you. Amen? You may not even know that you are. Amen? Thank God for those people. Paul's saying to Philemon, you're one of those people. He said, I have come to have so much joy and comfort in your love. Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. Wow, the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. May the Lord say that about me. May the Lord say that about you. Do I hear an amen? amen? All right. Listen, even the Apostle Paul needed encouragement. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Look at verse 6. But God, who comforts the depressed, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Hold on a second. Paul says, kind of generically, God, you know, comforts the depressed. And then in the same breath, he says, comforted us by the coming of Titus, which tells me that Paul was amongst the depressed. Come on now. Come on now. Understand. God who comforts the depressed in the same breath comforted us by the coming of Titus. Titus brought encouragement. He brought comfort. He brought exhortation. What does it mean to encourage? It means to put courage into another soul and into courage. When we encourage each other, when you encourage a brother or a sister, you have no idea. 
You know, there's, a lot of times the body gets enthralled with all the power gifts and oh, the gifts of the prophecy, oh, the gifts of interpretation and tongues and the gifts of healing. I want to tell you something that that encouragement is a Holy Ghost gift. It's a powerful gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. And uh, Paul was comforted by just the showing up of Titus. Sometimes just being there. You know, in the Jewish tradition, when someone loses a loved one, they go and they sit shiva with that family member, that husband, that wife, that father, that mother, or that uncle or aunt, right? Okay. And they sit and sit shiva, S-H-I-V-A, for seven days. It's actually, they took it out of the book of Job. There was tremendous comfort by Job's three friends until they opened their mouth. <laughs> they comforted him just by their presence. You don't have to say a lot to bring comfort to people. My wife likes this saying, and, uh, and she's so right. It sounds really kind of funny to me, but it's true. She learned it. It said, sometimes you got to be a big heart. Uh, what is it? A big heart with ears. A big heart with ears. So I'm looking. I see this big heart and these ears on each end, right? <laughs> I, I visualize things. Uh, sometimes you have to be a big heart with big ears. Amen? And... Uh, with, you know what? Just by coming sometimes, just by being with people, you can bring comfort to them and refreshment. In verse 13 of 2 Corinthians, Paul goes on and says, For this reason we have been comforted. Um, okay, why, Paul? Besides our comfort, we rejoice even much more for the joy of Titus. Because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. They were comforted and, and, and Paul was comforted to know that the ecclesia at Corinth refreshed Titus, his dear friend and perhaps fellow apostle. We want each other to be blessed. And sometimes when we hear that there was a blessing that came to someone that we love, someone we care about, right? We are blessed because God moved in their life, you know, and that is what Paul is expressing here. We are so comforted that you refreshed, Corinthians, Titus, our friend, our brother. Encouragement sometimes take the form of consolation. Encouragement could other times take the form of exhortation. You know, I love, I love it when the Lord brings forth a pure spirit of exhortation. You know, it, it, it operates powerfully through some of you in this congregation. And, uh, you know, and I thank God for it. I just want you to know I do thank God for it. And I recognize that it is God. But thank you for your obedience in uh, being obedient to that spirit. Amen? And that sometimes, you know, it takes the form of just being gentle, you know, and, and, and coming underneath someone, right? And sometimes it just takes the form of someone just, say, you know, uh, just saying to you, snap out of it! <laughs> you know, come on now. Come on, buck up, right? Uh, you know, put your big boy pants on or your big girl pants. You know, come on now. You can do it. Yeah. Come on. Hey, do I hear an amen? amen? We may not always like it, but we need that too. Amen? We need that too. All right. Now, I, another character, probably my favorite character in all of the Hebrew scriptures is David. We're coming to a close. And there was a period of time before David became king, Melech David became, before he became king, David was seven years running from, well, at least seven, maybe 13 years, if I know my history backward, running from Saul. And he was with a whole band of men. And, um, and so turn with me quickly to 1 Samuel 30. 1 Samuel 30. This is so cool to go and use both the Hebrew scriptures and the Brit Hadashah, amen? 
they tell one theme and one story. Amen? You can see that thread. So in 1 Samuel chapter 30, um, and David uh, and his men take off, and, uh, and it happened when David and his men uh, came to Ziglag. Everybody say Ziglag. Because I believe that we all need to come to Ziglag, spiritually, all right? Spiritually. And uh, on the third day, uh, the Amalekites made a raid on the Negev and on Ziglag and had overthrown Ziglag and burned it with fire and they took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone. And they carried them off and went away. While David and his men were away, they came to Ziglag and they took all the women and children and all of their goods. Verse 3. When David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. Sometimes you, something happens in our lives, and we feel like everything has been burned. Everything has been burned down. I've had that happen to me a number of times. I'm like that old song. Yes, I, I, you remember that song, Landslide? You know, it's like, you know, it's like a landslide. Everything came down, right? And uh, but God was not through, amen? And uh, they burned the town down. And their wives and their sons and daughters have been taken captive. And what happens? David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and they wept. And there was no, they wept so hard and they cried so hard that there was no strength left in them. Have you ever been there? I have. And if you're honest, you have been there too. And... Uh, now David's two wives had been taken. Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. Look at verse 6. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people there spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. They were so embittered, they were so grieved, they, you know, and they always look for someone to blame. And who do they blame? They blame the leader, right? They blame the head. They blame, they blame the leader. And they were talking about stoning David. Listen, <laughs> sometimes, you know, you find yourself in a position as a leader, you know, and it happens. You get stoned. And I'm not talking about you know what, all right? I mean, you know, sometimes you get crucified. But look at this. It says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Oh my God. Dear ones, there are times in our lives when we can't rely upon another human being. God will bring people into our lives, you know, in a timely fashion, just at the right time. But we also better learn how to go to Ziglag and when we're in Siglag, we better learn how to strengthen ourselves and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Jude says, uh, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Ruach HaKadosh. Keep yourself in the love of God. Nobody else can keep you in the love of God. You have to keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah unto eternal life. Amen? David strengthened himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Please, please, please learn how to be with the Lord. And quietness and confidence will be your strength. Still, still, and encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen? And then before you knew it, uh, the Lord raised up David, and they went. Look what happens. 
in verse 18. I mean, he encouraged himself in the Lord. The Holy Spirit encouraged him. He was strengthened supernaturally. He, in other words, he ate his Wheaties. Amen. <laughs> Remember that? that? You know, Henry, you got a wheat to Wheaties, you know. And uh, he's like Popeye with spinach. Amen. We have to get with the Lord. That's where the spinach is. You know, that's where the weeds are, okay? And, uh, and then it says in verse 18, they went after the Amalekites. They absolutely whooped the Amalekites. I mean, they defeated them. They slaughtered them. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken. He rescued his two wives. And they got, they got back and recaptured everything that they had lost. And I'm telling you, that you've got to strengthen yourself in the Lord, encourage yourself in the Lord, receive the encouragement when it comes from others. God is going to restore to you and to me everything that the enemy has stolen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. He wants to restore everything that the enemy has stolen. Come on, do it again. Amen. Amen. It's serious. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come, John 10.10, 10, that you might have life and life more abundantly. That you might have life and life more abundantly. So, simple word about Barnabas. Dear ones, be a Barnabas. Be a son of of encouragement, be a daughter of encouragement, be like Barnabas, be like Titus, amen? Be like Paul. You refresh the hearts of the saints. You can. You can. Let me just challenge you. It's been winter, you know, there's been sickness, people have, there's been cold and snow and ice. Invite each other over to your house. Don't isolate. When you isolate, it's when the enemy has at you. Amen? You need to be a fellowship holic Can I hear you? Amen. You need to be a fellowship at all. Go out to lunch after Shabbat. Go out to lunch, unless you're taking Kevin's class, and then go out for a snack. Amen? <laughs> and, uh, you know, go out, go out, have a meal, Get each other's phone numbers, get a directory, and invite each other over to each other's homes. Be together, break bread together, have table fellowship. Don't, don't be isolated. Be addicted to the ministry of the saints, amen? Have the ministry of hospitality. Every home that we have been invited into, I loved. And I want to be invited back. <laughs> Amen. You know what? But there are people here that you need to just, you don't know somebody that well? I want to tell you, they are delightful. Go out and have a meal with them. Don't, you know, spend some time. You know? Get to know David. He's a student at CMU. He's poor. He needs you to take him out for a meal. I don't know that that's true. You know, you know I'm just saying, get to know each other. Spend time with each other. Don't just run out the door. Uh-huh, you know? Don't just run out the door. Hang out for a little while. Schmooze. You know, when I go to a, to a congregation, I tell everybody, you know, we don't booze, but we schmooze. <laughs> you know? Schmooze. Schmooze with each other. Be schmoozers. Amen? Jesus. Take the time. There, you have a ministry. You know, every one of us have a ministry. Amen? Amen. Be, be a Barnabas. That's my word for this morning. It seems really simple, you know, but it's very profound. Amen? Let's pray and then I'm going to... Father, we thank you for your word. Father, your word is so filled with, Lord, promise, with, with uh, everything that we need. 
Lord, it, it says that even in the scriptures, Lord, that's how, Lord God, that you feed us, you give us encouragement, Lord God, and strengthen us, Lord, that we might be broken bread and poured out wine uh, to the lost, to the world all around us, to those that don't really know you, to the backslidden, to the broken, to the weary, to each other. We all need encouragement. And uh, we need each other. And we want to receive from you, from whomever you want to, uh, for us to receive from. Even Mr. and Mrs. Thornbush, Lord. Uh, whoever it might be. In the mighty name of Yeshua. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need.